it's Ina the Mood Reader and today we're going to talk about the worst books I have read this 2020. Welcome to my book mass day 10. I don't know how I am still surviving this. I have just started a new job so I haven't been sleeping but yeah so welcome to the 10th day of um my book mass and i have watched Haley in bookland's recent video i'm not sure if it's her video yesterday or the day before and she talked about her worst books of the year so i was inspired to do the same um i'll be linking down her video below and the reason why i was inspired to do this because i'm not the type of reader who gives low ratings um as, as much as i can i give books like even those that did not appeal to me like close to three stars maybe like 2.8 to three stars and um, for this year as i checked all the other books i have read and so far i have read 178 books this year i only have five that i have rated two to one star and for this reason, I just this is going to be a quick video. I'll just be talking to you about the titles, why they, they did not appeal to me, and why I was disappointed by these reads. So I'm just going to talk to you about them, not in, randomly, not in order, just as I recall the titles which I like wrote down earlier today. <clears throat> and just a disclaimer, so just a disclaimer, these ratings reflect my opinion about the book and um, it might fit your taste. So like don't be hesitant to try them out if you wish. It's just that, I don't know, <laughs> the books did not appeal to me when I read them. So the first book is um, The Vampires of Portlandia by Jason Tanamore. Um, to be honest, it really breaks my heart to give this book a low rating because the author is a Filipino and as much as I can, I try to lift up the works of my kababayans but <sighs> this book was really disappointing. I read this a few months back for um, a readathon. I can't remember which readathon it was but I'm not sure if it's for the weekathon, but yeah, and I was really expecting something cool because this book was playing on the concept of a swang. There are th these like monsters in the Philippine folklore, and that includes vampires. So it's about a family of vampires from the Philippines, literally flying overseas to the U.S. in Portland, and something happens there. Um, and then there was an adventure to explore, being the lead, the new leader of Aswang and all of that. Um, unfortunately, this book um, failed. Attempt to showcase the Filipino culture, it really failed quite spectacularly. I wish um, they had like Filipinos living in the Philippines beta read the book so that the geographical descriptions will be accurate. There are many wrong descriptions in the book. The places are like the the place are the places aren't accurate. Like Baguio and Sagada has a beach. How? I don't know because Baguio and Sagada are high up in the mountains. You cannot drive from Bis from Visayas to Luzon unless you like ride a Roro, which is a boat and some of those are just two examples of like the things that are wrong with the book and story-wise it was just so so it was really dragging and yeah the next book i didn't like was is girls night out i have just read this a few days ago it's part of my december reading experience mm -hmm. but i wanted to include it here because I also rated it two stars. Um, it's about it's written by author duo um, Liz Liz Fenton and Lisa Steinke Steinke, and I loved the other book of theirs that I have read before, which is I can't remember. I'll just put it here, but 
that one was like a five star read. It, this book, Girls' Night Out, is about a group of women who have been who are technically supposed to be friends, but I don't know how they could be friends. They really hate each other, and they are being dishonest with each other. And their trip to like Mexico, and this book is like told in a mystery type story where in you'll try you're trying to guess why one of the girls went missing and if it if there's like a supernatural influence because they there's this talk about the like folklore of the island and all of that so the book is like an alternating past and present narration and it was like a failure <laughs> to me. I didn't really like the book. I was disappointed because of how much I loved the first book of theirs I have read. There are some um, loopholes in the story. You can probably guess where things would be going. And it wasn't like thrilling enough to be a good thriller, <laughs> basically. So yeah, I also rated that book two stars and then the other book that i rated quite low is under the scrubs by katarina baker i talked about this in a wrap-up before which i'll be linking somewhere here and this book is just poorly written it's about a doctor um and an fbi agent so it's really technical if you like pick this book up you're expecting some correct technicalities you expect a doctor to be knowledgeable enough to be a doctor and the book failed to deliver that imagine um an ob gyn doesn't know how to handle babies that's quite impossible because they're in ob <laughs> and of course before you become a doctor you have different rotations so surely she should have probably known a lit at least like the normal bit of knowledge about handling babies and pregnant women and just by that i was really turned off by the book it, it didn't sound realistic to me it's like maybe the author just picked out a random occupation for a character and did not do the proper research to deliver a good message like a good um, representation for the characters that she chose for the book and same goes with the story it's like a mafia-ish thing that's very ridiculous and yeah <laughs> it was really another disappointment it was one of the first arcs i have on my net galley shelf and yeah unfortunately it did not pass my tastes and the fourth book I have is My Summer of Love and Misfortune by Lindsay Wong. I also ranted about this already in another video and I just came in with very high expectations. One of the first books I read for 2020 was Love Boat Taipei and this book was pitched as something similar to Love Boat love boat taipei so imagine my high expectations for the book and unfortunately this was like nowhere near the the how amazing it was for me to read love boat taipei and she is an american born chinese um the character here is very ridiculous it's very shallow very materialistic and all of that she got cheated on by her boyfriend and she has this um outbursts which at, th at that point i understand you have been cheated but also she was failing her schooling at her senior year and um she was actually her boyfriend was actually just treating her like um his wallet so she's like a very young sugar mommy for her boyfriend and she did not know she had no idea and she wasn't like treating life seriously so her parents like shipped her off to china for her to know about her ancestry and she, all of 
the time she had this like um wish that she was actually royalty she was hoping like she is a korean princess and i really hate how the author did that as asians are struggling to set our countries apart and for us to be known especially for east asians like not everyone in east asia is chinese so she's like trying to cancel out the existence of korea and japan yeah <laughs> by like con making the readers confused about who the character is like and like blurring out all the lines between um each asian country's culture and at the same time this girl who has failed all the colleges she was applying for had this idea that she can become valedictorian if you are the valedictorian then why would you fail like all the colleges you applied to and yeah this book was is a really frustrating one it's perfect for when you're in the mood for hate reading because i know the image people have about YA being shallow and foolish and all of that. This book is the embodiment of that. And like it's a very sad representation of the genre of like the age group. Because there are so many YA reads worth spending your time on and your money on. And this book is not that, unfortunately. And lastly, one of the worst books I have read for 2020 is Something in Between by Melissa de la Cruz. I have read this book last May 2020 and I remember how I was screaming about it to my family, to my sister, how I really hated the book. And at that time, I was really itching to write a review on how sad and angry I was at the same time about this book because it was um i this book is kind of stepping on being a filipino and the sad part is this book is actually written by one and again i really hate trying to not promo or not back up filipino authors because i think that's what um i should use this platform for but anyway this author is actually one of the most famous filipino authors or like authors with filipino blood that has like entered like mainstream publishing worldwide international publishing and sh her works have been adapted and all of that so yeah um i was i have seen many books of melissa de la cruz all over bookstores and she has never like touched on her filipino heritage aside from this book so i was really expecting something touching and something realistic and um i, I guess it's my fault in a way that this book has failed me spectacularly because i don't know <laughs> the character here jasmine i still remember her name is like being ashamed of being filipino like the the thought of being sent back to the country would kill her and um she i she solely identifies as an american so i know like immigration stories are um very famous at the time when this book was published and i cannot speak for all the filipino americans who relate to this book because I know many of them found themselves in like Jasmine's shoes. But it's really um, very uncomfortable as a Filipino in the Philippines to read this one. There are so many wrong misconceptions about how life is like here. And really, we're not that like old school. We're not like that behind, okay, in like life and culture and technology life in the philippines is really not that backwards and conservative as she thinks and like full i don't know this could take a long long time if i like talk to you about everything i hated about the book but it's really sad that you know you're expecting like a full-blooded filipino migrated to the united states at least have an inch of like 
nationalism still in her blood. I know she's an American citizen. I guess she's an American citizen by now. And I guess her allegiance is to that country. So, yeah. This, I guess, is a good book if you're talking about being an American. But if you're talking about being a Filipino, then this is really not the book to read. Because you'll just get frustrated. And in terms of the story, okay. So in an in an objective point of view, um, removing my being Filipino, um, this book is a little ridiculous in the way it told its story. It doesn't even treat her family well. Um, and again, she hates the Filipinisms of her family. Um, she's going against what her parents are trying to teach her and all of that. It's just that, I don't know, I, <laughs> I can't organize my thoughts. I'm so tired um, just thinking about what I felt like when I read this book. And it's like, eight months after, um, I, I'm trying. I'll try to organize my thoughts about something in between and maybe that's what I would recommend you to read <laughs> instead of listening to this rambling. Um, but yeah, this book I gave one star because um, I really hated how the country, the F Filipinos as a whole, were represented in this story. And if you love this book, I'm sorry, it just wasn't my cup of tea and now I realize how hard it is to talk about negative reviews on camera because, I don't know, we have different tastes. So, yeah, maybe I'll pick up a Melissa De La Cruz book someday and at least then I'm not reading about her writing about her being Filipino. So, yeah, Whew. <laughs> this is quite a tiring video, I'm sorry, but I want to know, I would want to know what the worst books of 2020 are, what was the worst book you have read this year, um, no judgment in this space, you can comment down below which books like really disappointed you, and yeah, we'll talk about it, maybe it's one of my favorites, so you can roast them all you want and I won't judge. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. See you guys tomorrow. Bye!